guys are at it they've already got the fire going so this is the orchard we come to the sort out out there That's them started, we've had a chat, they know what they're doing. So basically, things like it's all peri pear, it's apple, well, it's more mistletoe than apple. So we'll probably end up trying to prune a little of that mistletoe out, but to be honest, we'll see what the tree does in the summer, but there's a good chance that this is just a candidate for replacement, as is quite a lot of these out here. But the general idea is, to replant and restock the orchard and actually put it back into production for fruit production. So, yeah, any local cider makers interested in getting, getting involved? Bit of work out here. It looks run down and neglected now, well, because it has been, but I think, give that 10 years, that's gonna be a cracking little orchard out there. I think it's fixed. I think it's done. And if it is, I've got to thank Jason. Jason Kershaw, who rang me. In fact, he messaged me a couple of times yesterday. And then he rang me last night. He probably doesn't want to know this, but he rang me just as I got out of the shower. So he and I are having a conversation while I'm sat on my bed in a towel. So, yeah, it's probably not an image he wants to, wants to know about. But anyway, he said to me, he said, your Rode microphone issue, this is the new microphones, should be in stereo. He said, I think I know what the problem is. He said, it happened to me as well. He said, I couldn't find, he went all over the place trying to find out what the problem was. And he found the answer to my problem in a forum somewhere. And he said, it's the safety channel. You've clicked the safety channel and that's why you're only getting a sound out of one speaker. And I said, fantastic. So we had a little conversation. And then I put the phone down and I went in the bathroom and got dressed. Uh, and then this morning, I've had 10 minutes and I've plugged my speaker into computer. And indeed the safety channel was turned on on my receiver. And now I've turned it off. And I think, fingers crossed, you're in full stereo. On top of that, I did some editing last night. No, and a bit more smaller last night, I thought, oh, it looks a bit dark. Couldn't get my head around it. And then this morning I thought, that still looks a bit dark, so I did another, another half an hour this morning. And then I realised that while I was messing around with the camera on my phone, because obviously you can run these cameras from your phone, I changed the compression rate on the file. And Windows Movie Maker does not like the really compressed files. So you'll notice even the beginning of this video and yesterday's, maybe even the day before, picture's a little bit different and might be a bit more grainy and that's the compression ratio. So all this stuff where, you know, you have all these, when you see a, a video or a, a film or something and you get all this list of credits of the people at the end, that's all the people in there that check all this stuff Everybody's got their own little job and they make sure that everyone, they present you with a video or whatever else, it's all perfect. Um, unfortunately, with this channel, like most other channels, you've only got me, who is at best still only a rank amateur. Bear in mind, this is still only a hobby for me. So a rank amateur, and I'm learning all the time. So I have to be cameraman, sound, sound man, director, editor, producer, character, they have to do all of it. And sometimes I don't get it spot on. But you know what? I'm quite happy to own up to my failings. I am definitely not perfect. But I think, I think this bit of video I'm shooting now should be okay. Should be okay. 
Anyway, I've got to get ready. I've got to get ready for Eddie. Eddie is coming, probably with a new Holland and a fertilizer spinner. Um, he wants to put some fertilizer on his ground. I'm storing his fertilizer in here in the dry. He'd run out of space at his place. They basically had nowhere to put it safe. And I said, well, look, you put, your, you put the fertilizer on for me. The least I can do is offer you a, a safe dry space to put yours. So he's coming to put his fertilizer on today. So I need to move all the gear in here so I can get it out. And then if we've got time, and I'm going to go and have a little walk out in the field because it has been really wet. If it's dry enough, I might get him to put a bit on for us as well. Maybe. Right. That's you on charge as well. I'm kind of hoping it's going to stay dry. I mean, look at the state of the barn floor. It's been raining so much, it's been flowing into the barn. I don't know if I can get a chance, but it is nine days until our charity event. We get nine dry days. We can do this thing. Right, it's just as easy to get all the trucks out at the moment, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get them all out. We've got a bit more room in the yard for a minute. That won't last long, mind. Once Holly's cabin's in here, which is going to go where I'm putting this now, then, well, then we'll have less room again. But, you know, I'll have happy daughter. Small price to pay. Next and last, but by no means least, Dad's 695. Okay, so I'm going to try starting this. No heat, no excess fuel, no nothing, just start. This is one of those tractors, if you use it regular, it's got no problem. It's when you leave it parked up for ages, it becomes less keen to, um, to cooperate. Uh, Better have that up as well. Okay. Wallenstein splitter. I'm thinking about upgrading this this year. Uh, no decisions been made yet. This was actually designed to fit on a compact tractor. So um, this will fit on a literally a little Kubota or well any small tractor. That's what the linkage is for here. We had this frame made on the A-frame so it would fit um, a bigger tractor because yeah. We just we just made it that way. It's a bit it's a bit firmer, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a good it's a good splitter, but I think we've had it about five six years now, might even be more than that. I think it's time we consider it. So it has a habit. It's done it twice now, of actually shearing off bolts under here. So we've repaired it twice. So if it's if somebody does have this though we will tell them that but uh yeah it's 20 ton splitter good job and you can either have it like this or you can undo this little fella and all that flips up so this goes on the floor um and then it's just it's just to stand up and you know for big stuff yeah good splitter but do we change it this year so dog just let me know we've got a couple of walkers coming up that's all right they're on a the footpath no bother to me whatsoever 
Hello Tiddlers. That's our newest baby. 216, isn't she lovely? Hey, ain't you lovely? I've not actually registered her yet, so remind me to do that. So I've got I've got 20 odd days yet, but uh, yeah. You look happy in there? Yeah? Okay. Lazy days. Okay, I think everybody's got plenty of food. These guys down here, yeah, plenty in there. And I gave them a bale this morning. So it's gonna be off with a spike, on with the pallet forks. I have to tip the pallet forks over or I can't reach it. I got waylaid by a couple of walkers. They were intrigued with the cattle. So they got a little tour. <coughs> Apparently I made her a day. A bit more. This is where I should have, and I've got, steel toe cap boots. That's one, two, okay. I'll get a ratchet strap, secure that on there. Job will be good. In. I don't think that's coming off there any time soon. All right. Let's have you up standing again, shall we? You gonna stay there? Probably not. Got the spare fencing rails. We did a job locally, and the guys got a bit carried away with how many rails we needed. But I don't mind having a few spare. These are one of those things that, you know, if we're doing a tree near a fence or something, it's handy to have a couple of spares about that if a branch goes the wrong way and we break a rail, we've got some spares. Right, we are kind of ready for Eddie. Well, not quite dinner time yet. Not sure what time he's coming. Oh, talk of the devil. I literally just shut the door. Morning, Miss Jones. I've literally just shut the door. Oh, you're joking. I literally just, I literally just put the, uh... Yeah, I was going to have a wander down and just see what our grain was like, but oh, okay. Saturday it was just like squish, squish, squish. It, if, it, if it's too bad, I don't mind leaving it and come back another day, look. It's entirely up to you. But what I want to do is get mine on. Yeah, yeah. Because I've got, I want to get on and get it working because I've got some nitrogen coming. Yeah. Easter. And now I'm going to top dress that afterwards, look. Well, I don't mind getting the uh, avenue done and possibly the bottom right hand. But the bottom left hand, I think, is going to be too. Well, you, whatever yeah. you want to do, if you want to do it, do it. If yeah. you think it's too wet, we'll just leave it. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I shall have the spinner on another day. Yeah. All it's right. your choice. All right. Well, do you want to bung a couple on yours, and then you go off and do a bit of yours, and then. Uh... Well, if you want, yeah, I yeah. don't mind. Yeah. It's you. Well, I've got to have a walk down there then while you're gone. All right. And then see what it's like. So I was literally just about to wander down there then and okay. go uh, have a look, see what it's like. So. You heard me coming. Yeah. I thought, yeah, seems yeah, like yeah, Ed, yeah. yeah. All right, no worries.
Yeah, no, they were all just bring him a bit nearer the front on yours, so. you heavy as well, wouldn't it, Mark Martin Graymore? Too, it don't seem to be taking out that much room. This stuff must be dense or something. I don't know. So I noticed it's quite heavy coming out of there, so. Yeah, 600 kilo bags, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh well, yeah, all right, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'll just have to see how it goes. All right. Yeah, that'd probably be wise, I reckon. So if the grain was hard, it'd be less risky, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you don't want to be ploughing it up, do you? No. No. I'm probably going to be marking it, but... I, yeah, well, that's what the road is for, isn't it? Yeah. It's something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think, I think with me, it's going to be out here, get this on, and then when it's a bit dry, out there with a the slitter rake, yeah. slit it and, and rake out, the, and then, then roll it. Yeah. So, open it up, and, and, close, it, close, and close it all back down again. So yeah. All you want to do is put the roller on behind that. Uh, yeah, I don't know that. Don't know if that'll work quite. Yeah, yeah, not sure if that'll work. So, uh, what, uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Right. All right. I'll go try this. Then. All right. I'll see you in a minute. Is that the same stuff in there? I can't even remember. No. No, that's different. So it's these three. Yeah, better not give him um, those two. That's, that's got nitrogen in it. That's about twice the price. <laughs>
Right, I better shut the door, being as I'm wandering off. Right, that's the next two bags ready for Ed. We'll load them up when he gets back. I should have enough time to wander down there, see how wet it is, see if I'm happy for the trap to travel. It's kind of rocking a hard place. I need to get it on. It's not doing any good in a bag in the barn. It needs to be out there to start doing its work on the organic matter in the soil to encourage the microbes. Apparently, it works better with like 14 degrees C and above. I think that was the numbers Steve gave me, but um, yeah. I mean, we know the top half is wet. We know that, but will it travel? This bit isn't too bad. This is what we wanted to do. This is um, obviously organic material and the humistart's job is to feed the microbes that convert that into nitrogen. That's their job. This bit's not too bad. Cattle are seeing me out here. They want me to open the gate and let them out. But there is no point because there's very little for them to eat here. They give them a day, whatever's out here, they'll chew it off. But yeah, I think we'll travel out here. This is okay so far. There's a couple of wet patches we might have to avoid a bit, but I'm sure Ed can go around them. Yeah, let's get it on. This is a slightly different story here. So getting in here is gonna make a mess. So do I leave this one a bit longer? It's definitely softer right here. And I remember the other day when I was helping Val get her sheep in, we had a river going down through there. We had rivers going down across the bottom of there. Yeah, I think we'll, um, I think we'll leave this one. So the avenue will take some, so I reckon one bag. Uh, we're about six and a half, six and a half acres on this bit. Um, one bag. You coming up? Come on in. Come on in. And yes, I'm pleased to see you too. We've got all the bags we want out now, so I can put everything else away. Might be a bit tight. Someone's not very happy because I left her outside. Oh. 
Oh, I did it in one. I didn't think I'd do it in one. Come on then. Right, that's all the vehicles back in here. And I've still got space to get down there, get a bag of logs if I need one. Right, bit of dinner. I've got about 30, 40 minutes before Eddie comes back. Ready for round two then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put one bag on yours and then up the other two bags. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll bung it on, open the gates. It'd be a good experiment. Yeah. Well, you might see any difference, you know, if you do the one. Yeah. Before. Yeah. You know? Well, though I have mucked this one, uh, so that's cheating. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of giving it a bit to eat in it. So. <laughs> yeah.